Hey, welcome to Lead a Life Uncommon. This is Mary Bicknell, former psychotherapist turned badass success coach for women entrepreneurs who are ready to bust through any average, anything common, and finally create a life and a business where you can do whatever the hell you want to do whenever you want to do it. Ready? Let's go. Hey, how's it going today? Welcome to Lead a Life Uncommon. And what we're going to be talking about today is frequently the situation where women are financially dependent on a partner. Not always. We talked about this before, um, where 70% of moms somewhere in the life of their kid being at home from zero to 18 are the primary breadwinners. Today, we're going to be talking more about this in week two of this Money and You series during the month of April here in the United States, or whenever you're listening to this, I see you out there. I see you burning the candle at both ends, making ends meet. And sometimes at the end of the day, you may have that question, what's this for? Why am I doing this? And today, really, we're going to, I'm going to ask you some hard questions. Got a list of questions for you liberating questions, empowering questions, mindsets, and belief. I'll tell you more about the other episodes coming up at the end of this. Um, And you're out there, you're doing this good work. And when you come home, there's a shift that happens, right? When you're out working and then it's that shift into all the other things that women need to be responsible for right? Or like the cook, the, you know, the taxi driver, the like the cat sitting here on my desk, um, you know, the dog walker, all the things. And a lot of times we are the primary breadwinners, or even if we're not the primary breadwinners, but we're in a financially dependent relationship. And I want to say this, how do you know if you're in a financially dependent relationship, even if you're the primary breadwinner? it's asking the question, and these are going to be some of the questions that I ask you, is are you still deferring to your partner? Are you still deferring to the man? Are you still deferring that way? Is it in the implied in your household, right? Some patriarchy bullshit that like the man, man makes the decisions, One of the things that we're going to do on week four of this is really helping you rewrite your money story. And these are some of the things I want you to start thinking about. Is it implied that he makes the decision because he's the king of the castle? Like all these sayings, right? It's like all these sayings. When you really start dissecting them in today's world, in today's world, it's shocking. You know, this really comes about this conversation about financial independence, creating you creating, you creating your own safety, not your lover, not your partner, and not your clients. That's really, that, that'll be a deeper dive where you, uh, a, a lot of times when I'm working with my clients around their business and they're like, you know, they've, that person has to sign up. Like I need that money. Our clients don't create our wealth and our success. We do. And the goal here is that we're not dependent on clients to pay our bills, but that's a whole nother kind of a little deeper conversation today. We're really, we're talking about truly your, your partner in your home, the partner in your, in your home. And this came up because I don't know about y'all, but it seems like a lot of people are dropping dead or getting a divorce. And maybe it's just my genera- my like my age range right now. Like a lot of people are getting divorced. Either their kids are like getting older so they feel like they can just go ahead and get a divorce or, you know, the kids are out of the house now and it's like they don't even know each other. And what happens is, or maybe you're younger. And you're just, you're feeling trapped. You're feeling stuck in a bad relationship or not even a horrible, shitty relationship, but in a relationship. And you're staying there because you actually don't have financial freedom, even if you're making as much money, equal money or more money. And so this is my conversation. I want to encourage you as a woman is where are you independent? Where are you sovereign? Where are you autonomous? And look, 
it has taken me a long time, candidly, to get to a point where I I am the primary breadwinner in my home, getting to the point where I'm not like asking. And it's funny because it's like asking, but I always do what I want to do anyhow. So there's always this like, what's the point of asking? Now, I know I get pushback when I hear this, right? A lot of people hear, and, and I'll get the women who are like, I, I, I ask my husband. And it's not that I never ask my husband or talk to my husband, I should say. I don't ask my husband. I never ask my husband. Uh, maybe I'll talk to him. Like, for example, I'm getting ready to redo my TV room, the TV room. It used to be all decorated for River when she was a kid. And now she never goes in there. And I'm like, it was a big ass room. I want to just totally redo it and make it my room, like a creative space for me. Even though I have this beautiful office, but I mean like a place where I go in, it's exactly like you walk in and you're like, this is clearly Mary's room. I don't need to ask. I don't want to ask anybody. So it's not just that, but I, I reflected back to, um, you know, some of my clients, younger women, and I really, I, I want to ask them and I'm asking you, like, are you happy? Are you in a relationship because you want to be there? Because you want to versus need to. And do you even know what's going on with the bills and the finances in your house? You know, I was married before and my ex-husband kept all the bills at his office. That's a whole nother story about controlling men and narcissism and, and all the things. But I was in a relationship with someone and I had zero understanding on like that person could drop dead and I had like no clue, no clue what could happen. Speaking of dropping dead, you know, back to people getting divorces and um, people dying. You know, one of my friends told me recently about her friend and her, the friend, my friend's friend, her husband passed away. And it was like, he got up in the middle of the night went to the bathroom, came back to the room, looked at the wife, like, like he got up, he got up and went to the bathroom, but like, I don't know, the light was on or whatever, looked at the wife and then just like face planted, dead. The teenage kid came out because the mom, she was screaming and the teenage kid came out and she came, you know, they were trying to do CPR, all the things, died on the spot, like died, dropped dead, massive heart attack. The woman it didn't know where any of the stuff was held. The um, life insurance policy, coincidentally, he had like changed life insurance policies like a couple weeks prior. And for whatever reason, that new policy had not been like put into place yet. And this person's life and this kid's life completely transformed. Had to sell the house, return a car, like huge things. And it really got me thinking, like, I hear these stories over and over and over again. Women staying with men, even when they're the primary breadwinner, or women not knowing what could happen, what would happen if X, Y, and Z happened. So we're going to talk about that, but let's start off with like the good work, like the fun stuff, right? The good news here is this is, oh, you can change this. You can make a decision today instantly change this. This is the goal here is that you instantly do this. You know, you're out there, you're doing this work. You want to have meaning for your work, right? In your life and the, your soul's work, your spirit's work, the stuff that you love. I want to encourage you that you can design your lifestyle, build a business to fund it and be in charge and stay with somebody, be with someone that you love because you want to, because they fit into your vision of your big life. Um, uncommon life. And sometimes your lifestyle, no matter what way you're living, you still, you get just caught up. So I want to give to you that you can have the yes and. You can be in a relationship and be financially independent. You can be in, an, in a partnership and be soft with you right now. Yes and to big impact and more money. Yes to big impact and more money. Yes, I'm generous and I have boundaries. Yes, I'm in a committed relationship 
and I'm here because I want to, not because I'm financially stuck. Yes, I can raise my rights and step into a new level of abundance. Have you ever considered this? This is a really like pay attention if you're spacing out. Have you ever actually considered this concept? Are you with your current partner, number one, because you're stuck financially? And if you're stuck financially, no, this is a brain twister. I really want you to pay attention. It could it be possible that you're actually not allowing yourself to make more money because if you were independent, financially independent, you may actually make a different choice about the relationship you're in. Let me just bottom line it. In other words, do you hold yourself back from making shit tons of money? Because you feel like if you made shit tons of money, then what's the point of being in this relationship? And it's scary, isn't it, to let go of a relationship? Who wants to get a divorce? Who wants to go date? Who wants to start over? And so sometimes we make these decisions to stay in the crappy, even though we want the grand, the uncommon success, the amazingness. And yet, and yet... We don't do that work because it's hard. It's hard to let go of something. So many times I ask clients of mine, what would happen if you made more money than your lover, your partner, your husband? Oh, my husband says, make as much money as I want. And we always hear that. I love, my husband loves a strong woman, really. And maybe it's totally true. So this is not what he's saying that it's not true. And yet... There's frequently an implied something. Now, look, this patriarchy stuff goes back for eons, right? The man goes out, he kills the buffalo, and the woman, like, you know, makes the cape. The woman tends to the house. That's her job. What is it? Barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. How many of you have kids, daughters, and you're teaching the daughters to be financially independent? Are you able to even teach that to her? Are you practicing? Are you role modeling for your daughters? And those of you who have sons, are you talking to your sons about what is, quote, quote, and I'm air quoting here, the traditional roles in a traditional relationship and how they shift and how they're able to shift. I'm going to say this question back to you again, though. Have you ever considered that if you made more money, you may not be in your current relationship? Have you ever considered that you're you're sabotaging your business success, your financial success, because you know somewhere inside that if you made more money, you wouldn't be with him. If that's you, let's talk for real. So part of this is really focusing on the solution, the solution of the yes and, right? The solution can be, yes, I'm making a huge impact and I'm being well compensated. Yes, I make the money in the house and I'm here because I want to be with this person. So here's some questions to help you dig a little deeper. Today is not like how to be financially independent, go invest in real estate and know your stock markets and NFTs and like all the things. My job is to help you have a different way of thinking thinking and being more of that evolved independent self and saying this too, I want you to know, and I actually had this conversation recently. It's like, you know, I, I love being a wife, mother, lover, and I love being financially independent and having my own business and being able to make a shit ton of money and not have to ask, do I want to spend whatever, you know, $2,000 on this or redoing the the TV room and buying an all new sectional, like everything I've already bring in my painter in and all the things. It's just done. It's just done in my head. Plus two, side note, when I'm doing that, it really fuels my creativity. When I'm in abundance and overflow thinking, and actually that's what we talked about week one. But here's some questions for you to really think about. 
what would happen if fill in the name of your partner, if you have one, what if that person was gone? Are you able to pay your mortgage, take care of your kids, all the things, weddings, clothing, vacations, college, new cars, the second house. Do you have what you want financially or are you waiting for him to make the money or are you waiting? Do you look at your relationship and one of you is the earner and one of you is the spender or one of you is the saver and one of you is the spender and you have that like dynamic, that argument, that dynamic. What if you went out and made tons more money? I want to be candid here with you. Is there a lie that you tell yourself about your ability to earn more money? When is your Sally come to Jesus day about getting your money story together, your money assets together, all the money stuff together? One of the things that I do in in every single program whenever I work with people is um, called Clear the Clutter. And one of the things in Clear the Clutter is removing all the things in your to-do list on your head, right? So it's not only like go to the GYN and, you know, get the tires changed and like all like the brain dump of list of things to do. It's also looking at where are your insurance policies? Do you have insurance policies? Like how much money do you need to live where you are living now? One of the things I always want clients to do if they're transitioning into a, um, a new offer is making that offer something that ultimately pays for everything. I love for you to have multiple revenue streams, multiple offers, not in the beginning, but after you have that one that's like taking care of everything and then adding on. How does, and we talked about this actually last week, how does like the saying, like, I don't really know about money. I don't like numbers. I don't like sitting down and doing my QuickBooks. I just want somebody else to take care of it. That's fine when you first take care of it yourself. When you know what your income is and your outgo, when you know where all the the important documents are, do you personally have a long-term vision for your own financial stability? If your partner dropped dead today, God forbid, or they said, guess what? You know, I want a divorce. Do you understand that women in divorce, like, look, nobody wants that. Like, nobody wants this. I'm not saying go get a divorce. I don't want you to have to get a divorce if you're in a great relationship. Divorces are expensive. And typically what happens is the woman gets screwed. Her standard of living actually decreases while the man's increases. Are you aware of that? So the house that you're living in right now even if you're not, if you, even if you don't love it, like that's going to go away unless you are able to fund all of the expenses. Are you able to do that? And not just like your baseline expenses. Again, it's all the like, what are the future expenses that you want? Why not create all that now? Why not be that person now? Why not evolve into a money making machine now? Doing work that you love. Why not create? a business and be the woman that has a life that she never wants to retire from, has a life that causes her to jump out of bed because the work is so great that you've created a thing that you're like, why would I ever want to stop doing this? It's so amazing. So the work has meaning and the meaning is the value that you're compensated from or with. Do you have like a standard meeting, by the way, meeting, meaning, do you have a, like a monthly conversation with your partner around money? Like, do you print out the bills, the print out what's been spent? So, you know, all the line items, are you familiar with that? Do you have different, um, bank accounts? Like here's some, here's some things that I personally do. So in my business, I have my business checking account. It's always money in there. And then I have a business savings account. Okay. So I have those two things. So of course my business, I write a check every month or like a check is written, right? I'm paid monthly. 
that goes into my personal family checking account. And then from there, I have a few different savings, if you will, savings accounts. And they look like emergency account, taxes, like these things I have allocated that just come off the top. Unexpected expenses, vacations, um, my taxes, like all of these things are just pulled right off. Why? Because frankly, I don't like to be surprised. I don't want a surprise. I don't want a hit of a big tax day that I that I I didn't um, calculate effectively. I don't want like, oh my God, you know, my tires, like I need $4,000 or whatever tires are right now, $2,000 worth of new tires. And I'm like, Ugh. of course I can put that in a card. Of course I can actually just like pay for it. And yet there's something that feels more secure when I know that I've already allocated money. Maybe I never use that money, but it's there. One of the things that I, I, I'm sharing this for, or I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to really understand that you create your own safety. You create your own financial safety and security. Personally, one of the things that drives me is not having these two amazing houses, which that's fantastic. But finances for me is is um, really working also towards safety and security for myself. I grew up where money, you know, I grew up in an apartment and I grew up with two parents that were, they didn't go to college, but they worked in finances. And so it's ironic, isn't it, that they never taught me jack about money. Nothing. Except like, don't be a loser. Don't go bankrupt. Don't, you know, you better like, but they really never taught me anything. But it's so the money though, is this contentious kind of thing. I'm going to ask you some questions in week four. We're going to talk about um, helping you rewrite your money story. Next week, week three, we're going to be talking about self-care and business success. And today's episode, today's conversation, if you will, is really about getting you starting to think about that. Like financial independence, having these deep dive conversations with yourself and your partner, also re reminding you, you can have the yes and yes, a big impact and a lot of money. Yes, the work that it has meaning and you get paid well. Yes, you can be making all the money in the house and you can be with a partner because you want to be. And next week, we're going to be talking about your business and thinking about your business as self-care. And I'm ending with that. You know, I've really gotten this concept that, that my safety and security about knowing that I create my own financial independence and abundance, oh, I just can breathe deeper because it's the sense of my own self-care around safety right? It's back to that patriarchal thing. Like, I want him to take care of me. I want him to rescue me. I want him. Why? Why are we looking outside ourselves from, for somebody else to take care of us? Where did we hear that lesson, you guys? Right? How have we been taught as women to be dependent? So today, Answer those questions. Go back and review. Dog ear this. Watch this again. Listen to this again. Wherever you're hearing this, seeing this. And really sit down with yourself and ask yourself that serious question. Am I financially independent? And I can take care of all my desires, wants, and needs? Or am I financially dependent? And what would happen in my relationship with my partner if I made all the money? And for those of you who are single, these are great questions to ask as you get into a relationship. What's the dynamic that gets set up? What's the expectation, the implied expectation and the, um, the, the implicit and the explicit? expectation. So go make it a great day. 
Remember, be bold. You are a leader. You deserve to lead a life uncommon. And uncommon success is for those who choose it. And today I want you to choose financial independence so that all the relationships that you have in your life and all the things that you want in your life, you know, you believe, and you know you can accomplish them. Next time, we're going to talk about business success and self-care. We're going to dive deeper into that. And then in our fourth episode in this series, Money and You, I'm going to help you rewrite your money story. And we're going to really talk about some of the some of the programming that you had growing up. So follow me over on um, Instagram, Mary Bicknell, Be Bold. And of course, I want to hear your comments, see your notes, reach out to me. How has this made a difference to you? And here's to your financial success. Go be bold. Lead a life uncommon. Bye now. Hey, thanks for listening to Lead a Life Uncommon. I am so excited and pumped out of my mind for you. My job, my goal, my mission is to help you create the life that allows you to jump out of bed every single morning. And I know a lot of it comes from your thinking. I want to give you a little something. Head over to marybicknell.com slash podcast. I want to give you the guide to your hidden thoughts about money and success. Inside, you're going to get some ahas about what might be holding you back from creating all the financial abundance that you want. We'll talk soon. Bye now.